Slater, and Mahomes is so good, he can beat you lefty. That and more on Lock It In right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Lock It In, the show that puts its money where its mouth is. I am your host, Rachel Benet. Joining me today and every single day, first up, Former Caesars Odds Maker star of the Bet the Board podcast and a real deal, holy field, Vegas sharp, Todd Furman. Todd seems to be betting props a lot lately. Does Sal have you playing scared, bud? You know what? It hasn't been a good two days. The gambling gods, Rachel, they're a fickle lot. The turnaround starts today. I'm sick of being at the bottom of the league. AKA, he can't even show his face in Vegas right now. Next up, host of Fox Sports Radio, Doc Kick the Coverage, best selling author and SEC nerd, Capital N, Nashville's very own Clay Travis. Clay, can you believe your onside kick bet didn't cash? Shocker, really. It's the only thing that didn't win for me yesterday because I, despite the lack of respect out there, am currently number one in the weekly contest. Test. Look out, boys and girls. We'll talk about everybody that real. in a bit. Last but not least, our final panelist is an Emmy Award winning writer and television personality who appears regularly on Jimmy Kimmel Live Cousin Sal. He also jumped an entire jar of pickles on my head last night. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, first of all, that was an accident. Yeah. Everyone who was watching can clearly tell that was an accident. And uh, <laughs> you know what? I should have won my best bet. I, I, they're counting that as a loss. I had over 47 and a half yards as the longest kick. McManus kicked one from 46. Are we really going to split hairs here? I think this sets a bad precedent. Speaking of hair, that pickle juice did wonders. Can we talk about this right now? Oh, oh, oh. All right. See that bar above me? That tracks the guys' money and bets throughout the show. They started the week with a thousand. Much more on that later. But first, it is time to devour the world of sports. We call the segment Handicapping the Headlines, baby. The Chiefs improved to 4-0 and in the season behind second-year quarterback Patrick Mahomes as Kansas City went into Denver and got a big win on the road. Mahomes threw for 304 yards and one touchdown, and he loves the way his team battled down the stretch. It speaks volumes to this team and, like, how much heart and determination that we have, that the defense got up there, made a lot of key stops, and offense just kept fighting. The offensive line kept fighting. The running backs, the receivers, everybody just kept fighting, and we came out with a win. I love this team and just how we fight. I mean, we hadn't necessarily been tested in this situation yet. It just showed that every phase of the ball, special teams, defense, and offense, that everybody can step up and everybody can make plays. And I knew we had it, and I'm glad we got to show it for everybody else, and we're going to keep it rolling as the season goes. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. We were supposed to show you a clip of Patrick Mahomes speaking there, but clearly it was just from Star Wars because that sounded like Yoda, right? That was Yoda <laughs> that we accidentally put in there. Not the best at clearing his throat. Whoopsies. Uh, Sal, the Chiefs are 3-1 to one to win the AFC. Do you think... They will run away with the conference. That was an exciting game last night. I think that was a great game. And Vegas took a little bit of a bath yesterday. And you know what? They should take a bath. It's a filthy town. I'm sorry, Furman, but it needs a bath every now and then. They gave out Denver plus five and a half in the beginning of the week. And then you could have jumped on Casey minus three and a half. It fell in the min middle. But Mahomes is great. What's to say? Like, they scored 27 points. The conditions were not ideal. He's running backwards. He's running from Von Miller and Chubb. And it was the defense that stepped up. They back to the ball intercepted. Exceptions. They're going to be good. Don't worry about the Chiefs. Three to one odds is pretty good. I'd cash in on that right now for AFC title. All right. You, you know what, Sal? You mentioned the defense, and that's going to determine if this team is a viable favorite in the AFC. I mean, they showed last night they had a ferocious pass rush, able to get to Case Keenum and keep Denver behind the sticks at key downs. You also look at Kansas City defensively, number one in the league at third down defense. We know the offense is going to be able to score. Patrick Mahomes has been electric so far through five games. The only other quarterback to average 25 points or more through this short sample size in his career, Kurt Warner. And last I checked, he's got his bust in Canton. You look at this offense, they're going to continue to adjust and provide nightmares for defensive coordinators. I don't think they deserve to be the favorites, but they're making a strong case to be a difficult out and can't wait for the next two weeks when we see the Chiefs against that Jaguars defense mm -hmm. at home and then on the road in New England against the Patriots. That's what I want to see is what Todd just mentioned. I want to see how the Chiefs do against the Jags, and I want to see how they do on the road against the Patriots. The reason why I want to see that, we have learned, at least if you watch a lot of NFL, that there are a lot of hot shot young quarterbacks that come in and look incredible in their first few starts. We've already seen a couple of those guys fall off this year in a big way. Deshaun Watson, everybody was convinced he was going to be incredible for the Houston Texans. He's a good Frank Wright decision away from being winless for the month of September in the NFL. 
Jimmy Garoppolo, even before he got injured, was headed for a really weak start after an incredible seven-game beginning. So if we look at what happened with Alex Smith last year with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs offense, they were 5-0. and They looked unbeatable. It looked like no one could keep up with them. And then they fight their way into barely making the playoffs as the division winner in the wild card. And they lose to my guy, Marcus Mariota. I want to see what happens this weekend against the Jags. <laughs> I thought, I thought when you watch this game, the story to me a little bit, as much as I loved winning this bet, was Case Keenum making $18 million a year and missing Demarius Thomas for a throw that an $18 million a year quarterback should make to win that game. If that had happened, then the Chiefs would not even be in first place at the quarter point of the season. They'd be losing in the AFC West. So as good as Mahomes has been, I just want to tap the brakes. I also want to toss this Wait, out. Are you Wait, done yet? I, think, I think everyone's Hold falling on. asleep. Are you done yet, Clay? I think there's some odds that Ed Ogeron might actually be Patrick Mahomes' father. Because if you listen to that accent, you can't convince me that that is not Ed Ogeron. Oh, it's a three-hour radio show. The fact that you even covered that game last like seven night seven hours today? Don't you want to take a break? <laughs> do, we ta do we take a call, Clay? Do we take a call? Should we check weather? How does the Clay Long Travis radio show work? Long-time caller. This is your show. Whatever Traffic you want to do. Traffic and weather on the eighth, Clay Travis. Gosh, darn. All right. I'm sorry that I've got such amazing uh, info to share. We yeah, are moving right. on. Julian Edelman returns to New England for their Thursday night football matchup against the Colts on, wait for it, Fox. Pat's head coach Bill Belichick knows it will be a little bit of a challenge getting Edelman back into the swing of things. Take a listen. And don't fall asleep during that. Good to have him back, and we'll see. You know, we didn't practice yesterday, so we'll get moving on some things today in terms of game plan and trying to get us as far along on Indianapolis as we can. I'd like to hear him excited. What do you think that sounds like? Anything different? Uh, the, the Pats are currently 10-point favorites against the Colts. Clay, are you confident in New England in this spot as a double-digit favorite? Again, Clay? Oh. I'm so <laughs> glad Sorry, that guys. you guys are letting me talk for a change show, on Clay. this show. I'll switch it up next. No, I'm not very confident in them as a 10-point favorite because I actually think the Colts are a little bit underrated here. If you've watched the Colts play this season, they could very easily be 4-0. You change three plays and they would have won all three games that they've lost. All of them have been decided, except for the one they won on the road against the Redskins, by the final drive or the final minute of that game. I think they make it somewhat close. I think 10 is too many. I'm going to be betting on the Colts' early preview for Thursday. Ooh. Okay, so that was nice. Oh. You got to your point. Nice you said quick. enough. Everybody's that happy. Good. It was 30 seconds, they told yeah, me. that wow. was good. Great job, Clay. Edelman. Edelman is going to be the fastest guy on the field because he's had nine months off and everybody else has had three days off. But the fact is the calendar has turned. It's October. It's Belichick and Brady's sweet spot here. And Vegas recognizes it. And that's why they're a double-digit favorite, the Patriots are. And they're looking at their schedule. They're at the Bills and at the Jets. They may be a double-digit favorite in those games, but this, I think, is going to be the heftiest number they lay the rest of the way. And I know the game is on Fox and everyone should watch the hell out of it, but I don't think Frank Reich is going to have an opportunity to make an asinine decision in overtime in this one. <laughs> well, if he does, they'll easily cover his 10-point dogs there, Sal. But you look at this Patriots offense, and Tom Brady's offensive output, nowhere close to what we've grown to expect uh, from the surefire Hall of Famer. His passing yards per game as low as they've been since 2010, but the Patriots have thrived on short rest. I mean, this is a franchise 15-2 and two straight up when they have shorter time to prepare. Wright got the best of Bill Belichick and company as the offensive coordinator in Philadelphia. Don't think that'll be lost on New England, but you do have some injury concerns. Sal mentioned Julian Edelman. We're not sure how healthy he's going to be. Mm -hmm. T.Y. Hilton going to be out for the Colts, so they lose their deep threat. And game-time decision, Rob Gronkowski. Without all those key contributors, I wouldn't be shocked whatsoever if the Patriots' defense makes a difference here. I actually lean under in this total at 51 and a half. Either way, no matter what happens, it's going to be a good game. Thursday Night Football yeah. on Fox? Yeah. On Fox. It's going to be a good game. The, uh, moving on, the 1-2-1 one, one Steelers return home this weekend as a three-point favorite over the Falcons. But the latest news coming out of the Steel City is off the field, as reports say... Le'Veon Bell is planning to return to the team during week seven. Todd, how do you bet on Pittsburgh with that little tidbit of info that we've been talking about for what seems like the last month straight? Well, I'm just so happy that Le'Veon Bell is going to play this year. My under 13 touchdowns, that might be the only bet I'm able to win the way things have gone the last couple of days for me. 
But you look at this Steelers team, and everyone was so excited about James Conner after week one against Cleveland. But this is a rushing attack right now that desperately misses Levy and Bell. There's no threat of a ground game going for big play potential. Under three yards per carry, I mean, rushing yards less than 50 yards per game, this doesn't give the Steelers the balance. And when you have a defense that surrendered more yards through four weeks than any team since the merger, it's not a recipe for success. Thankfully for Pittsburgh, you may not have to run the ball against Atlanta. The Falcons give up yards in bunches. If this passing attack can't look competent this coming Sunday against the Falcons, then it's time to really hit the panic button, and Mike Tomlin might want to dust off that resume a bit. Oof. Well, listen, your king, yes, I am still your king, mentioned yesterday that Le'Veon Bell was going to have to make a decision who, who, this week. Department, why did you give that back to him? How dare you? Don't, it's not giving it back. I earned this. I earned this. Listen, Le'Veon Bell, back, I said he was going to make a decision this week, and he did. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take two more weeks off. I'm not done well watching in Belize yet. But <laughs> pencil me in for like the third week in October. But he can't afford to do this. As Todd said, they have 43 yards a game on the ground. Here's their schedule. Falcons, Bengals, Ravens, Panthers, Jaguars. The Browns are in the mix. They haven't beaten the Browns. They just tied them. That's supposed to be their easy game. If they drop one to Atlanta, the Pittsburgh offensive line is going to be pissed. They're going to be in no man's land. I think it's a bad decision by Levy and Bell. I think it's really strange. I'm with Sal here. The idea that you would announce that you're going to come back in two more games, during which time your team may fall completely almost out of this early playoff race, is strange to me. It's also strange. When you come in like he is going to do, it seems like there's a high risk of injury after holdouts. And I know guys like to say training camp doesn't matter. There's nothing to be gained from it. But I do think it balances your body out for the grind that you're going to have to put yourself through. There is an inordinately high number, it seems, of guys who come in. Plus, we've got some athletes out there. I think James Harrison said he should fake an injury given what we just saw happen with Seattle with Earl Thomas. Right. Does anybody feel that confident that Le'Veon Bell is going to come back for these, whatever it is, nine weeks and sell himself out and go to the wall here when he knows his contract is going to be up and he's going to be an unrestricted free agent in theory right afterwards? I don't really think that Le'Veon Bell is going to be what cures that what what cures the things that ail the Patriots, the, the, the Steelers. I'm starting to sound like Sal here. I don't think you can really wager very much on the Steelers with the addition of Le'Veon Bell. I just don't think it's going to fix. I, I've I've never met someone who talks as long. That was one. That was over one minute. Single point. You know, one through minute. that minute monologue diatribe, whatever we want to call it. But Le'Veon Bell, pretty impressive that he has a job where he can announce he's coming back in two weeks. Clay, Sal, when we signed on to do the show, did we say, hey, you know what, we don't want to start now. We're going to start in two weeks. We're going to get in shape. We're going to uh, make sure we get our necessary reps. If I'm in that Steelers locker room right now, I almost tell them, hey, you know what, stay home. If the season's already a lost cause, do you really want him around when you see him posting Instagram Here videos in Miami? Guy's partying like a if rock star. If we thought the drama in Pittsburgh player. was worse before, it's going to be so much worse now. I like that Clay 100%. actually has to take a water break after his <laughs> diatribe. He's That's hard. how long he's talking. He got to make sure the, the, the throat is not hours. far. He spoke through week seven. Levian's now back. I am the host of the show, and Clay <laughs> talks more than I do. I don't know how that's possible. All right, moving on. The one in three Giants travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers this weekend as seven-point underdogs. The big story out of New York is the Giants' struggling offense, but Giants quarterback Eli Manning believes his team is doing everything right to be successful. Did I, did I get that? I see an offense that's making improvements. There's not mistakes. We're not going the wrong way. We've worked hard. I see a team that you know, prepares very hard. They practice hard. They're doing all the right things. We've got to keep doing those things, keep our head up, and, and just find ways to put it all together and find ways to win. Yeah, the whole time I was listening to that, I just want to do the Eli Manning face. Because <laughs> what? Oh, God. After the Giants game on Sunday, Odell Beckham Jr. said, quote, it shouldn't be this hard when talking about the offense. Funny, I say the same thing about hosting the show. Uh, Todd, how will the Giants respond to Odell's comments of seven-point underdogs this weekend? What do you think? Well, Rich, your job's significantly more difficult with Clay on the show than it is for Odell Beckham with Eli Manning as a quarterback. <laughs> but these Giants' offensive struggles aren't anything new. They haven't scored 30 points in a game since 2015. Over that time period, the Rams have scored 30 or more points in 12 out of 20 games with Sean McVay as their head coach. I mean, there is a definite power outage going on with Big Blue, and they've struggled on defense. They can't get healthy there with Olivier Vernon and Eli Apple missing extended time. But the bigger problem, if you're a Giants fan or a Giants better, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. 
You drafted Saquon Barkley number two overall. You didn't pay attention to the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. And sure, you might get Drew Locke or Justin Herbert next year, but there is no reason to be excited about Giants football going forward. And in this day and age, if you can't score 21 with relative ease, you're not going to win a whole lot of football games, let alone cover them in the process. Yeah, I liked it better when Beckham was taking out his frustrations on a kicking net. But listen, we should read between the lines here. He doesn't like Eli. He's going to tear his head off soon, I think is the problem. You saw the graphic. The last three years, the offense ranked 26th, 31st, and 29th. And Eli's in trouble. But the problem is, like Todd says, they don't have a great backup. Alex Tanney, uh, what is it, Kyle Loretta. Like, there's, there's not a lot out there. I don't know what Shermer does here. The only saving grace is that Sam Darnold has been shot back into a cannon, so you don't have that Jets-Giants media problem, but the Giants are not going to score enough to win games this year. I think the challenge is going to be, what do you do with the Odell Beckham contract? The reason why I didn't think he was worth $20 million is because I didn't think the Giants were close to being able to win a championship. Same reason I didn't necessarily think Saquon Barkley was going to fix everything that was wrong with the Giants. And I think ultimately here, the story, when you decide how you're going to bet between the Panthers and the Giants, is actually Cam Newton. Is Cam Newton back finally with the weapons that surround him to MVP level Cam? Remember right before that Super Bowl kicked off, the big discussion out in San Francisco for that game between the Panthers and the Denver Broncos was about how Cam Newton was close to becoming the face of the entire NFL. And then the wheels came off. He didn't dive on the fumble on the ball. And nothing has really gone the Panthers away since. And so as a result, I'm all in on the Panthers here, by the way. And, by the way, Furman. Are we done? I'm going to just filibuster. Are we done? I, I think the, the oh. thing I'm kind of thinking about here lately. Oh. I've been thinking it's about a lot of Mike already. Here. All right. You know, you, it, it, you're you not sure who's king after all that, oh. right? You would, you would think that you think boy, the guy in the middle was king. Boy, I hate I'm that the I'm the king of Monday right now. I'm Look at that dollar figure. People. All right, moving on. Fun story out of Vegas here. Jimmy Vaccaro, a legendary Vegas odds maker, tweeted this out Saturday. Take a look. Here is why you keep coming back, kids. Moneyline bet 1579 for a payout of 1581 A net win of $1.60. Looks like a sure winner, but he's rooting a drink and drinking a Corona. Uh, Alabama won their game 56-14 over Louisiana South. What is your reaction to this? What? Doesn't he have better things to do with his money? Yeah, this is why rich guys can never complain about getting taxed like this is what they do with their money they bet sixteen hundred dollars oh, what they do this is exactly what they do it's ridiculous it's some kind of challenge i don't know if it's like the cinnamon challenge for the wealthy but they get to post it on instagram or they make sure that it gets out <laughs> they get some kind of thrill i'm just saying there are easier ways to guarantee divorce than this and clay tells us about them during the commercial breaks all the time oh. i don't know if we want to run through them but <laughs> enough is enough actually i like seeing these and i like seeing when when they lose even better keep them coming you know what this is basically vegas's definition of putting up sixteen hundred dollars so you can get a free beer and your drink ticket when you think about all the things people go through for free gear you watch grown men jump over one another for free t-shirts at sporting events Vegas books have gotten a lot stingier with their drink tickets, so people are looking for angles. I mean, when I first moved out here 12 years ago and I was making about 12 cents an hour, I tried to bet one to nine trotters to show at Northfield and Dover Downs, the tracks that only the degenerates go to, because I didn't want to pay six bucks for a casino beer during happy hour. This guy has a lot more cash in his pocket. Like Sal said, you actually root for these to lose from time to time. You just hope those individuals aren't jumping off bridges. You're making 12 cents an hour? I think this is what... Where are we working? I was grossly on... I was grossly underpaid, Chris, overpaid, just overpaid. as much as Clay is overpaid right now to do this show. Clay, go ahead. Uh, he's in prison. That's where he met his barber. I got to tell you right oh, wow. now, uh, this is what Alabama fans do. They're all really, really dumb. And I hate to say it, wow. but the dumbest fan base in America, Alabama Crimson Tide football fans, this guy doesn't know how to do math. He doesn't know what's going on. He just wanted to be able to sit there with a beer and scream roll tide while they were beating Louisiana. This is not anything more than just an Alabama fan proving what's more, how dumb Clay. they are. Welcome to my world. Hey, hey, Clay, he might have known who Alabama was playing, but do you think he knew where the game was being played? Like, oh. Or you didn't know the difference between Columbia, I, South Carolina, and Columbia, Missouri? You shouldn't be able to name two cities in two different states the same name. And you should be like a copyright. Once well, somebody decides on a city, I'm the king. You know, I've always got to so like Washington, D.C. Out. and Washington State in my world wouldn't be possible. Guys, like I said, there's a lot of things that wouldn't be possible in your world, Clay, but we don't have enough time for that. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I think there's much better things to do with your money. By the way, I'm accepting sugar daddies, so.
Oh. Uh, I'm kidding. No, please. Good That's going to welcome a whole lot of weirdness yeah. on my Twitter. All right, guys, good, good stuff. When we done. come back to lock it in, nine bets, three experts, and only one me. An expert at being Rachel Panetta. I hope. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Coming up.